So good afternoon and thank you everyone for joining us for Canvas's webinar series. We are hosting a series of webinars to explore current and emerging topics in immunization to support and inform the work of public health professionals like you in improving vaccine acceptance and uptake. Today is the last of our scheduled webinars. We're hoping to continue this webinar series throughout this year as it's been quite popular and we are making plans for new webinars. So please stay tuned. You can check for updates on our webinar page at the link on your screen, canvax.ca slash canvax webinar series. If you missed our previous webinars on living better, longer, the importance of influenza vaccine or vaccine injury conversation, a complex conversation, or intensive mothering and vaccine hesitancy in the Web 2.0 era, or our last one, managing patients with adverse events following immunization, you can head over to our page to watch them now. Before we begin, we want to acknowledge that the CPHA's office is located on the original unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe people. They have been the guardians of this land for millennia, and CPHA is grateful for the example their stewardship provides. Today's webinar, Increasing Immunization Coverage by Strengthening the Decision-Making Process of Parents Through Motivational Interviewing Intervention in Maternity Awards, the EMI program, is brought to you by the Canadian Public Health Association through the Project Canvax and its partners, Immunize Canada, the IWK Health Centre, and the Institut National de Santé Publique de Quebec. I'm Rutian Xu, Project Officer on the CAMVAX project with CPHA, and I'll be your moderator for today. My co-host, Antonella Pucci, will be helping me throughout the webinar. If this is your first time on Zoom, please know that the webinar is being recorded and you will be using the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to, to ask questions to the presenter. Only you can see your questions and you may submit them anonymously. Once a question has been answered live, then everyone will see the question in their Q&A window. If you happen to encounter any technical difficulties during this presentation, please also use the Q&A feature to let us know. We strongly encourage attendee participation and we look forward to hearing your thoughts and questions. Feel free to submit your questions at any point during the presentation. All questions for the speaker will be answered at the end of the presentation. A couple of quick notes before we get started. The recording of this webinar will be made available on canvax.ca and on CPHA's YouTube channel shortly after the conclusion of this presentation. Please also note that upon the end of the presentation, you will be invited to complete a short five minute survey. The feedback you provide will be used to assess satisfaction and identify areas for improvement of the delivery of our webinar series. So please do take the time to provide your feedback. And also, if you haven't already registered with Canvax or subscribed to our newsletter, visit canvax.ca to do so, to get the access to the latest resources and tools. If you would like to suggest topics or speakers for upcoming webinars, feel free to let us know in the feedback survey, or you can send them to us by email through our website's contact us page. So with that, I would like to introduce our speaker for today's webinar. Our speaker is Dr. Arno Gannara, full professor of pediatrics at the University of Sherbrooke and neonat neonatologist at the Sherbrooke University Hospital Center. His main research interest focuses on children's immunization, mother-child immunity, and strategies to tackle vaccine hesitance, vaccination hesitancy and increase vaccine uptake. He is a member of the Canadian Immunization Research Network and of the country support through training in vaccine acceptance expert group of the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control. He has developed an educational intervention using motivational interviewing techniques in the maternity wards to promote vaccination and increase vaccination coverage. He is collaborating with the Quebec Ministry of Health to implement this strategy into a provincial program and develops the training of motivational interviewing in the immunization contract for healthcare workers. We also have with us Dr. Danielle O'Shea, for the presentation. Dr. Auger is a medical counselor at the Public Health Protection Branch at the Ministry of Health and Social Services of Quebec. She's been involved in the immunization field since 2003 and is responsible for the EMI program in Quebec since its beginning in 2017. 
Dr. Auger will also be available for questions related to the ME program. And with that, I would like to turn it over to our speaker. Hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be here to, to share with you this presentation about how we could increase the immunization coverage uh, by strengthening uh, the decision-making process of parents uh, using a motivational interviewing techniques in an intervention in maternity wards. So, so I would like to uh, thank you, Wilton and Hatunela and the Canvax team to invite me to, to present uh, this, uh, this slide. And I would like to uh, thank also uh, Dr. Daniel Auger from the Ministry of Health to be here with me to, to answer to all your questions. So first of all, I have no conflict of interest to declare. And I want to share with you an interesting story uh, of a mother, which uh, to my mind illustrates very well what is uh, our approach with motivational interviewing. You could find uh, this interview of the mother in the Stat News uh, journal. It was affiliated to the Boston Globe. And I put the link in the presentation because the journalist uh, interviewed this mother. I think it was a very interesting interview. So for the little story, uh, Mary Ellen was the mother of Toby. And Toby was a very premature infant uh, born in my unit. And he spent five months in my unit because he was very ill and very premature. And uh, Toby's mother was an anti-vax mother and uh, she decided to not vaccinate him. And the day before returning home, the nurses called me and said, Arno, could you see this mother? I'm very afraid because Toby is not vaccinated and he's going to, to, to go home uh, in an unvaccinated family, uh, in an unvaccinated um, uh, um, uh, village and uh, so uh, on a Monday evening I, uh, I spent one hour with, uh, with Mary Ellen to, to speak about immunization. So uh, first of all I uh, acknowledge Mary Ellen to be open to have this discussion with me and first I did not want to try to convert con to uh, convince him to, uh, to vaccinate her child, but I want to understand why she did not want to vaccinate Toby. So I said to her, uh, I know you want your best for the child and you think that to not vaccinate your child is a bad choice. And I'm a neonatologist, I'm afraid of, uh, and I think it's very fragile. So uh, how could we, could be uh, have, uh, an agreement uh, to, together to reach the, to this point. So at the first time, I listened only to his mother during long minutes to uh, try to understand why she don't want to vaccinate the child. And I did not want to try to correct directly his misinformation. And uh, at the end, she, she answered me, thank you, thank you, it's the first time that someone in the uh, a healthcare professional, it's the first time that a healthcare professional listened me and only listened me without trying to correct me. And after that, uh, we could build a trustful relationship. And after that, I could build a new knowledge with uh, Marie Ellen to be able to answer to all his concern about uh, measles and autism, about overloading the human system. And we build together a new knowledge that makes sense for them. And at the end of your intervention, I said to Mary Ellen, I keep you, I leave you to think about this. I don't want to send me what you're going to do. Just think about this, it's your decision, and I know you are going to do the best for your child. And I will respect your decision. And the, uh, the day after, in the morning, my colleague in charge of the unit called me and said, what did you say to the mother? This morning, we give all the vaccine to Toby. And when Marie Ellen returned home, she vaccinated all the child uh, living in the home. So I think it's a good illustration of how could, uh, powerful could be a motivational approach with hesitant parents. So also, I think there is a, an information paradox uh, in vaccine hesitancy, because when you're looking at the literature about a traditional educational approach, you could see that information, to give information, to give facts, to educate people, do not change belief or behavior and give more facts about vaccine, give more facts about vaccine-presentable disease, 
using a prescriptive language and using a fee-based tactics is ineffective to address vaccine hesitancy and worst, it could backfire and reinforce vaccine hesitancy. But on the contrary, uh, when you are asking parents, what do you want uh, for communication about vaccination? Parents answer they wanted more information than they were getting. So what's wrong? Uh, there is some literature that uh, have proven that to give information that don't work. And on the other side, you have parents that wanted more information. And maybe the problem is not to give some information, but how to give this information to parents and how to give information that makes sense for parents and help them to have a proper uh, decisional process. Because parents want information presented clearly and simply, tailored to the situation in a good time, and they want balanced information about vaccination benefits and harms. So maybe the approach of motivational interviewing could be very helpful to reach these needs of the parents. In fact, resistance arises very often from the interaction. Uh, maybe uh, as a clinician or healthcare professional, you have experienced that. And when a person doesn't feel listened or not understood, and think, or when she thinks there's freedom to act or to seek is written, uh, very often the, the relationship could become a struggle. And as a clinician, very often we want to resolve our patient's problem, and we use what is called the writing reflex. And using the writing reflex, we tell the patient how to behave, we adopt an expert role, we argue for the benefit of the change, warn the batteries, and capitalize the patient, and we give some information without asking permission and want to educate the client and want to convince him. And very often, the writing reflex leads to a resistance with the patient and to a very difficult dialogue. Uh, we should also know that it's very difficult to change. And to change a, a mind, to change an idea is very difficult. And for parents who don't want to vaccinate their child, who, who don't trust in vaccination, it's a very difficult to move directly to a vaccination or to trust in vaccination. So we should know that it's a step-by-step -step process. And we should respect this process. And if we want to, to move too quickly, towards the vaccination, we will develop resistance with the parents. Because what allows uh, people to change? Uh, people change when they think it's, uh, they want to change, uh, they think it's a deliberate choice, it's a good time for them to change, and they are confident in their abilities to change. So we should respect all these steps uh, during an intervention with parents. And the use of motivational interviewing is very helpful. Motivational interviewing was first uh, described by a psychologist, uh, Miller and Wolnick, in the, with patients with addiction problems, because they have seen that to tell someone, don't smoke, don't drink, don't take drugs, it's bad for you, it doesn't work. But trying to understand why a patient to do that and trying to uh, establish a partnership with them to try to have some target of change together and to help the people to find himself, his abilities to change is more helpful. So motivational interviewing is based on a spirit uh, with a partnership. Uh, we are not an expert. We have a pa partner with the, the patient. Uh, we are using a not judgmental way uh, with compassion of altruism. We also using four key processes, success, successive four key processes. First, we engage in the relationships to uh, focus and define what is a target or change, to move to the evoking uh, process and to see what uh, change could be done and if the patient is able to do this change, and at the end to move to the planification. And uh, it's a successive process because you couldn't uh, go to the planification if you have not established a trustful relationship or you are not focused on the target of change. And finally, motivational interviewing uses some skills uh, as open questions, uh, reflective listening, uh, 
which allows uh, the intervenant to uh, have a deeper comprehension of the problem of the concern of the patient with using affirmation to reinforce the confidence to do the change and also to use elicit share and elicit to share information with the patient. So it's important to, to know that uh, for an intervention about, uh, with hesitant parents, one intervention couldn't fit all the needs of the people. Every people are different, uh, every parent have different concerns, every parent has different level of vaccine hesitancy. So we should adapt uh, our intervention according to each parent. And uh, uh, for example, uh, could have a different level of vaccine hesitancy. And we should adapt the goal of our intervention according to this level of vaccine hesitancy. For parents with less level of vaccine hesitancy, we could move to a goal of planification of vaccines. Parents with high level of vaccine hesitancy, the goal of our intervention could only be to have an open discussion about immunization and to move step by step toward the target of vaccination. So the PROMOVAC uh, strategy is uh, a strategy to provide to parents uh, an educational intervention at birth using a motivational interviewing approach in order to increase vaccine acceptance. So it, it, uh, it is based of the need to have the first vaccines very earlier at two months. So there is a need for the early strategy of promoting vaccination to avoid delays in first vaccine. And uh, the nurseries should be a good place for this early strategy as near 98% of deliveries occurred in nursery. So it could be a good place to meet all the parents and to have such an intervention. And as we have observed a failure of traditional educational strategy, we have used uh, motivational interviewing skills and techniques to give those information to parents and to adapt our uh, strategy to the specific needs of the parents. So we uh, conducted several PROMOVAC studies uh, in Quebec and Canada to assess the effectiveness of an information session targeting immunization based of motivational interviewing in maternity wards on parental vaccination intention and parental vaccination hesitancy and also vaccination coverage in infants. The first study that we have collected was a regional cohort study in Eastern townships on more than 1,000 of parents. And we were able to demonstrate it that uh, when parents receive the interventions, it increased their vaccination intentions. And we observe an increase of 15% of the proportion of parents who have a strong intention to vaccinate the child after the intervention. And when we have followed the cohort of infants, uh, which parents receive the interventions, we're able to see, to demonstrate it, that there is an increase in vaccination coverage at each age of vaccination. At three, five, seven months, one and two years, there is a significant increase in vaccination coverage if parents receive the intervention. And using a logistic regression to uh, see that if parents receive the intervention, the child have 9% more chance to have a vaccination schedule during the zero to two years period. So after we conducted a provincial randomized control trial on near than uh, 3,000 parents in Quebec, in uh, the four main maternity wards in Quebec, in Sherbrooke and Quebec, and in the anglophone and francophone population in McGill University and St. Justine in Montreal. And so we are able to uh, see that uh, after the intervention, we have an increase of vaccination intention in parents in each maternity ward, uh, according to the regional uh, disparity, according to the socioeconomical level of parents, it works in each uh, categories on each maternity wards. We also observe in each maternity wards a decrease in the OPAL vaccine agency score with a decrease of 40% of, of the OPAL vaccine agency score. 
And more interestingly, we uh, observe that we have a great impact of high level of visitation in parents because before the interventions, we have uh, more than 50. Uh, 15% of parents who have a high level of vaccine hesitancy with a score, a NOPOL score of more than 50. And after the interventions, we're able to divide it by three, the proportion of parents who have a high level of vaccine hesitancy. And after the intervention, there is only less 5% of parents who, have still, who still have a high level of vaccine hesitancy. So what works uh, with this approach? Uh, with uh, the, the counselor is able to establish a trustful relationships uh, with the parents using the spirit of motivational interviewing and also the counselor has not a needle behind his back. He's not here to vaccinate the child. He's only here to have an open discussion with parents. So it's, it's more easy to establish a trustful relationships. Uh, secondly, uh, using the motivational interviewing skills, uh, with, with the skills, the counselor are able to give some information uh, presented clearly and simply and tailored to the specific needs of the parents and to adapt the interventions and the information uh, to the specific concern of each parent. And finally, the information is a, is a good time because it's two months before the first vaccine and so parents have time to take the decision. They have no pressure on their shoulder. Uh, they have no five minutes to take the decision. So it's more easier for her to think about this and to have an open discussion. So uh, with the collaboration of the Ministry of Health in Quebec, we move uh, into a provincial program with the strategy in the program EMI, EMI for uh, motivational uh, interviewing in maternity wards for the immunization of uh, infants or children. Uh, the goal of this program is to offer to all parents during uh, at birth, during the stay in maternity wards, an open dialogue on vaccination with, with each parent in order to reinforce their decisional process and to provide the best protection for children while increasing the immunization coverage for all infants in Quebec. The program uh, was possible with the partnership of the uh, Immunization Partnership Fund. We apply with the Ministry uh, of Health in Quebec to this fund to implement the Promovac strategy into the maternity wards in Quebec. So the first phase of the ME program was found by the IPF to uh, train the counselor and to evaluate the program and the program by itself was funded by the Ministry of Health. Uh, this, uh, this first phase occurred the two last year in maternity wards with more than 2,500 uh, 2, annual births, uh, which represents more than a half of the Quebec annual births. And the second phase of the program is still ongoing to implement all the program in all maternity wards in Quebec. So the aims of the evaluation of the program was to assess the implementation uh, by itself and the impact on the program in real life. We have used uh, the implementation science methodology with two models, the REAIM model and the consolidated uh, framework for implementation research model. Uh, the first strategic decision was to uh, add uh, dedicated staff to do that. It's the uh, vaccination counselors. And so these counselors receive a specific immunization training and also a specific motivational interviewing training adapt to the immunization context that we have developed uh, during the Promovac strategy. And the specific aims of uh, this evaluation was to describe the implementation of the program and identify the barriers and facilitators of this implementation and also to assess the impact of the program on vaccine uh, intention in parents and vaccine agency score and also vaccine coverage in infants. So I'm happy to present you Mathieu. Mathieu was one of our vaccination counselors 
and uh, you could see uh, this uh, Matthew doing a, an intervention with parents in uh, Majesty Wards. Okay. So we were able to reach uh, near than 75% of parents. And the main explanation is that some uh, Matthew Wards have some difficulties uh, of recruitment of counselors. So there is breakdown of services. And uh, when we are looking on working days, uh, we are able to see that uh, uh, each, par each parent could be rich in maternity wards with uh, near than 95% of parents uh, are rich in maternity wards and near than 80% in military uh, units. And where parents could be rich, uh, the interventions could be done uh, in the majority of cases. We have a very few refusal rates with less than 2% of parents to who receive to rec who refuse to receive the intervention and so what about the effectiveness of uh, the program uh, we uh, have a random selection of more than six thousands of parents who participating in the program and so we assess uh, the impact of the program of vaccination intention in parents and we observe a significant increase in vaccination intention in each maternity ward uh, with a global increase of more than 10% uh, for the entire population uh, of the ME program. We also observe a decrease in vaccine hesitancy score with uh, uh, the proportion of uh, parents who have a very high level of vaccine hesitancy was divided by two. And after the intervention, we have only uh, less than 7% of parents who have still a high level of uh, vaccine hesitancy. In each maternity ward, uh, we observe a significant decrease of the vaccine hesitancy score, and with a global decrease of 30% of the score. And in each maternity ward, uh, we have a significant decrease of the high level of vaccine hesitancy. Uh, that is divided by two uh, at the global level. So what about the impact on the vaccine coverage? Uh, we use two methods to evaluate vaccine coverage. The first method is a pre-post method. We evaluate uh, vaccine coverage in the six regions targeted by the program during the, the year before the implementation of the program and do you, do, during the year of implementation compared to uh, the 12 regions where the program were not implemented. And so we are able to demonstrate a significant increase in vaccine coverage at two months in the region uh, where the program was implemented uh, in, the, in the period of implementation of the program. The second method was to compare the seven months vaccine coverage in infants that parents receive the intervention in maternity wards in each region compared to a control group where parents didn't receive the program in the same region. And so we are able to see uh, that there is a significant increase of 6% at the uh, vaccine coverage at seven months in the group belonging to the program. But what about the adoption of the program? So we have a very, very short period to implement, to implement the program in each maternity ward, a period of four to six months to implement the program in each maternity ward. The majority of facilities were able to initiate the program at time in January uh, 2018. And, and uh, the additional uh, facilities were able to implement the program in March and only one maternity ward was only able to implement the program in June. Uh, the majority of facilities reach more than the 70%. This is due to the breakdown of services due, due to recruitment challenge in uh, four facilities. And as I already said, during working days of consider, they were able to reach the majority of parents, uh, near, more, near than 95% of parents. And when they could reach parents, they perform the, the intervention in the majority of cases and also uh, a very few refusal rates in parents. So what about the implementation and the identification of barriers and facilitators? So we have the studies data with the PromoVac strategy. 
the program strategy is an intervention based on motivational interviewing uh, during the postpartum stay in maternity wards uh, with dedicated staff with uh, in-person training and we have demonstrated that it could increase parental vaccination intention and decrease parental vaccination hesitancy score and also to increase vaccine coverage in the zero to two years periods so uh, moving through the process of implementation into uh, a provincial program we identify several uh, facilitators and barriers one main facilitator was a strong governmental support to the program with uh, local information support about the program. Uh, also, the counselors were well integrated into daily practice care and the program integration, acceptability and prioritization was very well in the units. Uh, several barriers, it was a challenge to meet uh, parents in the unitary units. It was more difficult than in maternity wards and also as a counselor, uh, where there is a small team of two to five um, counselors in each unit, they could have a feeling of isolation. Uh, we have also a very positive attitude towards the program with the manager and the counselor, and they are very confident that the program could reach the specific needs of the population. And uh, we also uh, develop the feeling of belonging of the counselor with developing and create a virtual community of practice to share experience and to give information and communication support to the counselor. Uh, finally, uh, several buyers due to uh, the breakdown of service, as I already said, sometimes in some um, facilities there is high number of parents to see uh, every day, so it's, uh, it could be a challenge. And we uh, also should adapt the trainings planification according to the recruitment process. And we should have a three more uh, training sessions to train uh, counselors according to the difficulties of recruitment. So after moving to, into the process of implementation, uh, the ME program was an intervention based on motivational interviewing during the postpartum stay in maternity wards and also in the notary units by dedicated staff, the vaccination counselor. And we should change the e-learning training, uh, the training by e-learning training and coaching instead of in-person training. But with this approach, we also have an increase of vaccination intention, a decrease in parental vaccination score, and an increase of two to six months vaccine coverage. Uh, we also uh, ha evaluate the uh, training in motivational interviewing with the counselor using the MISE questionnaire that we have developed previously. And we're able to, to demonstrate it that uh, the counselor are able to reach a uh, high level of knowledge, uh, skills, and confidence to use motivational interviewing through the training uh, in, the in the implementation of the program. Uh, according to the maintenance of the program, we have a very high level of satisfaction with parents, with uh, near 95% of parents who appreciate to participate in the program and which recommend to offer the program to all the parents. And uh, more in, in interesting, uh, near 98% of parents said that the discussion respects their point of view and it's a uh, quality of the use of motivational interviewing uh, approach with the counselor. And very important also, the majority of parents think that it's a good time to receive the intervention, that maternity ward is not a problem for them to receive the intervention. So to maintain the program, we uh, develop uh, uh, an integrated immunization and motivational interviewing e-learning training to train the new counselors. And also we maintain the virtual community of practice of vaccination counselor. So few key points to conclude. Uh, maybe it uh, could seem counterintuitive uh, to a global uh, public health perspective to use an individualized approach and to use uh, an autonomy uh, approach of the decision. But we could see that we have a, a great uh, global public health uh, impact with this individualized approach. And also, we have made the, cho the choice to have high level of training with selective healthcare workers, the vaccination counselor, 
So they, high, they had a high level of training in immunization and in motivational interviewing. And so they have a very great impact uh, during the intervention with parents. Also, we should adapt uh, motivational interviewing uh, specifically in the immunization context. Uh, and for example, according to the level of vaccination hesitancy of the parents, uh, for example, according to the process of motivational interviewing, the less the parents are hesitant, the more we could use the planification process and the less we use the evocation process. So we should adapt the process of motivational interviewing according to the level of vaccinacy of the parents. So finally, uh, the second phase uh, is ongoing uh, to implement the ME program in all multi wards in Quebec, uh, with the goal to implement the program uh, for April 2021. Uh, at this time, uh, 20, uh, uh, sorry, 200 vaccination counselors will be in place. Uh, the e-learning uh, training is in place with uh, coaching and supervision, and we maintain the virtual community of practice. So, uh, is this approach that could change the perception of the vaccination of the population. As we have uh, near uh, 90,000 uh, 90, uh, annual births in Quebec, uh, we could reach each year 2% of the Quebec population. And uh, maybe in uh, during 10 years, the program could be rich 20% of the Quebec population and could be rich the majority of the parents uh, population in Quebec. As uh, Michael Gradwell uh, published in their book, the tipping point uh, could be reach a sufficient critical mass population to change the vaccination perception in the population. Maybe we could have a herd immunity about vaccination perception because several uh, searchers have uh, demonstrated that it's very important to have an inoculation against misinformation and to have a good knowledge uh, permit to fight against misinformation uh, very well. So maybe this program could be very helpful to help parents to uh, not to be so susceptible to uh, against misinformation about immunization. So I want to acknowledge uh, all the research team that will be involved in the program, uh, the parents that participated in the study, uh, all the ME collaboration team, and uh, also thanks to Daniel Auger to coordinate the, uh, the implementation of the program at the ministry level. And as you could see, uh, maybe motivational interviewing is not so new because a French philosopher uh, 400 years ago uh, think about the basis of motivational interviewing. Many thanks for your intention. Thank you very much for your presentation. To all attendees, at this point, if you have any questions, please submit them using the Q&A feature. We have a couple of questions here, so I'm going to read them now to you. For our first question, coming from New Brunswick, um, in New Brunswick, they vaccinate for hepatitis B at birth. And so they have talked about implementing a program like this, but the concern is that parents have already decided whether or not they plan to vaccinate because the first vaccine is within a couple hours of birth. Do you have any comments on this? Yeah, uh, I, I think, yes. Uh, the ProVax strategy was developed uh, to have an information session uh, two months before the first vaccine. But as I um, presented the example uh, of the Toby's mother, with a motivational interviewing approach, we could also have uh, a great uh, immediately impact uh, because uh, Toby's mother changed his mind and decided to, to vaccinate the child just after. And uh, I think the most important is to keep uh, the decision to the mother, or the parents, not trying to have immediately the decision. But when you keep the decision on their shoulder and say them that we will respect their decision, sometimes it's, uh, th there is a diminution of the resistance as they are going to move quicker to the decision. And so I think it could also be applied uh, for hepatitis B vaccination uh, in my wards. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have another question. Has uh, motivational interviewing been looked at from a public health nurse perspective, or have the public health nurses been trained in motivational interviewing, and could this intervention be offered at the postpartum visit, thereby reinforcing the information provided in hospitals? Yes, it's a, a great question. Uh, maybe, uh, Daniel, you could add uh, some additional information. And uh, yes, it, it could be very, very interesting to offer this, um, this training uh, for public uh, health nurses because uh, it's very interesting uh, according to the Promovac strategy, but it's very interesting also for the people that practice immunization to have uh, some skills and some uh, basic uh, techniques of motivational interviewing to receive parent concern and to uh, be able to have less resistance during the act of vaccination. So it's, uh, it, will, uh, it could be very helpful. And uh, there is another part of the question, uh, but I didn't see on my slide. Uh, yes, and um, yes, uh, we have developed the concept in maternity wards because in Quebec, uh, the organization of mater in maternity wards is the same in all regions in Quebec. But the postpartum care is not organized in the same way in, in all the regions in Quebec. So it's, very, it's more difficult to implement a program with uh, several differences in logistical organization of postpartum visits in, uh, in all the region. So it's why we decided to, to keep the Promovac concept and to uh, apply this uh, strategy in Matiti Wards. But probably it could work uh, also uh, during the postpartum visit. Do you want to add something, Daniel? Uh, yes. The visit in Quebec is not done everywhere uh, and it's in, mainly done only in rural regions. So to reach the parents uh, to uh, the social visit would mean that we would lose the majority of parents because in the urban center uh, the visits are not done for everybody and, uh, and as example for uh, the people who had Previous kids, uh, sometimes it's only a, a, a telephone call that is done. So it wasn't an option, and that's why we, we implement the program at, in the maternity ward. Um, for the first part of the question, uh, motivational interviewing is part of the basic uh, academic uh, curriculum of uh, nurses at the university level. Uh, but, and it, it can be something that is uh, useful, I would say, as uh, in, in different parts of the, of the interaction that the, uh, every healthcare worker have with the parents. But the main, um, I would say, caveat of that is to, to keep uh, using these strategies, you really have to use it on a regular basis. And uh, beside the fact that there was an extensive uh, three days uh, training f in person for the first phase of the of the program. Uh, there was also uh, coaching to be sure that uh, our uh, immunization counselor really integrated the, the technique. And that's where it's hard. It's it's it's, it's easier to uh, maintain their um, their expertise for a small group and to be sure that. The, the intervention was done, was giving the, the good way, uh, instead of, of trying to train and supervise a uh, thousand of nurses all over our province. So, so that's why we, we did it that way. And also the fact that we had the proof of concept through uh, Dr. Gagnard uh, study. Okay, thank you very much, Arno and Danielle for answering that question. We have a, lot, a couple of uh, comments. Great presentation, thank you very much. The presentation was excellent uh, and everybody can still hear us. That's great to know. So the next uh, questions 
uh, from the same individual. Could you tell us more about the e-learning training, including the supervision aspect, as well as to, uh, tell us more about the educational background, experience, and training of the vaccination counselors? Are these positions paid or are they volunteer positions? I think we, we are going to, to take the same methods. I'm going to, to, to try to develop uh, the answer and uh, Daniel could, could uh, complete my answer. Uh, the vaccination counselor have a background of uh, a scientific and medical background, but uh, we have very uh, wide um, background of counselor. We have nurses, but we have also physiologists, we have nutritionists, we have kinesiologists, so we have very lots of people and the most important thing is to just have a, a scientific background to be able to understand uh, the immune system and what it is uh, immunization uh, to have the immunization background and also to have a great motivation to, to, to learn motivational interviewing and to practice motivational interviewing it's, uh, it's very important. But uh, so we move uh, as we have some very um, difficulties to, to organize a training person, uh, session in person according to the recruitment process, we move to the e-learning training. So uh, the counselor have to, uh, to have a part of e-learning with uh, the e-learning of the protocol of immunization in Quebec for the background in immunization. They also have a training in the basic basis of motivational interviewing. It's an e-learning training of the Institute, uh, National Institute of Public Health. And we add at this training an integrated, integrated uh, e uh, immunization and EMI training uh, with some example of uh, how to give information to parents with example of uh, how to use the process of motivation interviewing in the immunization context and with example of high level of vaccine hesitancy, low level of vaccine hesitancy or intermediate level of vaccine hesitancy to demonstrate to the counselor how to adapt the use of motivation interviewing according to the level of vaccine hesitancy. And after this e-learning, there is a coaching supervision with a motivational interviewing trainers that have a, a, a con fall uh, with the trainees and also with some webinars and to, uh, to be sure that the trainees are using well motivational interviewing. And maybe you want to add something, Daniel? Uh, yes, um, in phase one, uh, we try to, um, first of all, sorry, I'm going to tell you that uh, these, uh, these uh, resources were offered permanent position. Uh, so it's new job that was added to the maternity wards resources. And these are permanent po uh, positions. So these people have uh, uh, a, a status that is uh, uh, within the, the, the the, the maternity wards, just like other employees, um, and most of them, uh, even though there 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 are a lot of them, uh, in, there were in, uh, there will be a lot of them when all the program will be implemented. Most of them are part time jobs, uh, since the the delivery of the intervention must be uh, done each each day. It's it's during daytime, but each it could it should be uh, all week long. Um, and uh, as Arnaud said, uh, in phase one, uh, we didn't really um, suggest to the hospital to hire nurses uh, to, to become vaccination counselor, uh, since we were um, afraid that um, if it was a nurse on the ward that would be vaccination, the vaccination counselor, if there would be a shortage of, of uh, resource uh, in other aspect of the ward, they could be, uh, I would say, in a way kidnapped to do other jobs. So we had a, a wide variety, as uh, Arnaud uh, told you, uh, of uh, academic background. Uh, but for phase two of the program right now, where we are in a much smaller unit, um, the majority of our new uh, uh, immunization vaccine, uh, vaccine immunization counselor 
uh, are nurses and most of them also do uh, um, some vaccination clinics. So in a way it's good because they also use the technique they learn and they use on the maternity wards also uh, in the clinics. And, um, but the, the, the complexity of having the people at the right time in very, very small uh, maternity, maternity wards, some of them have a couple of hundred births per year, uh, it, it, uh, it, we had to adapt a, a little bit of the model. And to come back with the learning, uh, the e-learning, uh, Arnaud told you uh, there's a three-step uh, uh, training and we use uh, existent training that was already the, uh, available, one on immunization and it's 11 hour of e-learning, another one uh, on uh, motivational interviewing that is that's a five hour e-learning uh, uh, training that is already offered for other, other domain. And the third part is specific for vaccination counselor uh, with the supervision activities uh, mm -hmm. that are uh, to uh, uh, different uh, ways, just like Arno uh, told you. Okay, thank you much, much for answering that. We also had another question on credentials. Uh, what credentials do vaccine counselor had? And as we've heard, uh, there are a variety of academic backgrounds. So we're running a little bit short on time. We have about um, five minutes left to conclude the webinars and we'll take all the questions that we have here. We're just gonna have a little bit shorter answers um, than before if that's possible with you, Arno and Danielle. So our next question is, parents doubt about vaccines will sometimes lead to delay in their children being immunized about against vaccine preventable diseases. And some might say that motivational interviewing will not address the urgency of change. Is there a way for counselors uh, can relate the importance of vaccinating on time through motivational interviewing in urgent context? Yeah, uh, we often uh, hear that. Uh, in the intervention that the counselors made, we have a part of the intervention to give some information why we should start vaccination at two months. And so, uh, according to um, parents' knowledge and to try to, buy, to buy, build a new knowledge, vaccination counselors uh, give some information about the risk of pertussis and the risk of pneumococcal uh, disease and uh, hemophilus uh, disease uh, that occur very early in life. And so uh, when explained to parents, but using motivational interviewing skills that allows us to could give those information and the parents to be receptive to, be, to this information, uh, parents after I agree of the urgency to to have the vaccine in time. And it's a, a very important part of the information to give to the parents. It's why we should start at two months without delay and what are the risks of pertussis of uh, pneumococcal or uh, hemophilus um, at the beginning of the life. So it, it could be used with motivational interviewing. Okay, thank you very much, Arno. Uh, next question we have is, what ideas do you have about any follow-up conversations with parents once discharged from maternity wards? Would adding community-based staff such as public health to have follow-up discussions using uh, the motivational interviewing increase further uh, vaccine acceptance? Yeah, it, uh, in an uh, ideal uh, world, it would be great. And uh, maybe it would be great to train uh, public health nurses with uh, maybe not with a high level of uh, training as a counselor but maybe with a basic training to uh, for parents to have a similar approach in each uh, healthcare worker involved in vaccination and uh, maybe if the nurses uh, involved directly in the vaccination have some basic skill of motivational interviewing it could be uh, act like a follow up with the parents and the parents should be received at their concern, at their step-by-step -step change towards vaccination. And it could be great 
to have this kind of uh, evolution for, for the parents to have kind of people uh, who are in the same approach uh, during all the vaccination process. Okay, thank you very much. And you just answered as well, um, what are the, some considerations in pregnancy follow-up? So the next question, uh, a suggestion is that, as we just discussed, public health nurses often do have a role in prenatal care um, through the pre prenatal education in which they can also implement the motivation interview around vaccination. So our next question is, um, these are behavior changes that should, in theory, be sustained throughout the entire vaccine series, but is there a follow-up for these patients uh, to look at the impact of this technique on series completion? I think that's with respect to um, vaccine um, coverage and so along the series of completion past, uh, past what the data has uh, been available on. Yeah, yeah. I, I think uh, we have developed the concept in, uh, in Matthew's awards. Uh, but it could be worked in prenatal care. And uh, there is some example in, uh, in Australia that they have developed uh, pre prenatal uh, information session. Uh, but as uh, we have already said, uh, as the postnatal medical organization is not the same in all the region in Quebec, the prenatal care is the same, is not the same logistical organization. So maybe the concept could work, but to apply as a program, uh, we have made the choice to use um, uh, the postnatal system because it's the same in all uh, region of Quebec. Okay, thank you very much for that. And so I, I do see that we have one last question, but I'm afraid we won't have the time to take that. So thank you very much to our speakers, Dr. Arnaud Gannor and also Dr. Daniel Oshie for our webinar today. That brings us to the end. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank, thank you very much for the invitation and thank you very much to, for the attendees to, to participate and thank you for your question. Yes, so we hope that you enjoyed our webinar series um, as well as the webinar for today, which was fantastic on motivational interviewing and what goes on in um, creating that. As a reminder, if you'd like to suggest topics or speakers for upcoming webinars, you can let us know in the feedback survey that will be made available upon the end of the webinar. So have a good, wonderful afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much again for attending. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.